Welcome, happy warriors, and welcome to the Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show, where I, your rabbi, reveals how the world really works. Thank you for being part of the show, and as always, I profoundly appreciate uh, the um, public relations you all perform. I mean, there's so many of you who are telling folks about the show, uh, sending people links to hear the show, talking about it. Much appreciate that, and uh, the the audience for the show continues to expand, which makes it a lot of fun for me. And today's show is going to be something which is going to help you in many different ways. And here's what it is. Almost everybody makes the mistake of fragmenting their lives. What do I mean by fragmenting their lives? What I mean by that is that um, uh, there'll be a period of time where um, uh, a woman might say, you know, for the next five years I've got to focus on my finances using the 5F model that uh, I teach right? Family, finance, fitness, faith, and friendships. Those are the five pillars of a successful life. And yet what happens is people fragment, which, for instance, as I said, uh, a young woman says, well, for the next five years, I mustn't think about anything except uh, my job, my career, building up my uh, finances. Um, sometimes you have people, uh, you know, somebody might say, you know, I'm focused right now on uh, bodybuilding. Um, I, uh, I, I, I know that if I can just, you know, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he first came to the United States and he decided he was going to achieve success through bodybuilding. And, um, you know, and, and as you can see, there's a price. I mean, he achieved that success in, in many ways, but there was, of course, also a price to be paid in terms of his family. Uh, you know, you'll get people, um, you know, I, I've known people, both Jewish and Christian, who are very focused and want to go into ministry. And so you have young people, Jewish, Christian, male, female, um, who are very, very focused on faith to the detriment of the other four. And the point that I want to introduce you to is that um, fragmenting your life, focusing on only one of those at a time, instead of realizing that you've got to consistently be making progress in all five at the same time, failure to do that, and fragmenting your life handicaps your success and your happiness. That's the important thing to understand. Um, there's a fantastic novel called Anna Karenina by the Russian novelist Leo Tolstoy. It's not, it's not a short novel. It's not particularly easygoing. But, um, you know, if, if you're a reader... And, and you are interested in eternal ideas and ultimate issues, things that really matter, then, you know, you may well decide you'd like to read Anna Karenina. And, and you know, it's, it's an undertaking. You know, you, you're going to take a few weeks to, to get through it. But you will find yourself rereading certain paragraphs, even pages sometimes, just because... Um, they are so wise. There's so much insight. And listen to the opening. Let me read you the first sentence of uh, Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. Happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. That's very profound. And let me explain what I mean by that. Look, um, I keep talking about uh, how to be a happy warrior, how to build your life, how to avoid the mistakes, how to recover from mistakes you've already made. And, uh, and so at any given time, right, you have your unhappiness. I don't know what your unhappiness is. 
You know, I, I have mine and you have yours. We each have our own unhappinesses, our own discontents, our own regrets, and each of them are entirely different. There's nobody, there's nobody who has exactly the same package of problems that you have. But when it comes to happiness, when I speak about what a wise person does with their lives, and I speak about family and faith and finance and friendship and fitness, I don't say, well, now, if you are a white-skinned male of Lithuanian heritage, then this is what you should do with your five Fs. And if you are a black-skinned uh, Haitian of um, Catholic background, well, this is... No, it's the same for everybody. In other words, the avenue towards happiness ends up in one place, even though everybody starts off in their own unhappy place. So you can imagine it's like tributaries to a river, right? Everybody has their own particular unhappiness. But as they move towards, as each and every one of us moves towards improving our lives, we're all moving in the same direction. Because there's nobody who doesn't need a top-rate family, and there's nobody who doesn't need a top-rate financial life, and there's nobody who doesn't need a top-rate social life and a community life that's under friendship, and there's nobody who doesn't need physical fitness and, and good health, and finally, there's nobody who doesn't need, there are many people who don't realize it, but there's nobody who doesn't need a connection with the spiritual as well. And so, uh, let me uh, start off by clarifying the, um, the idea of systems, because that's what we're talking about here. Right? We're talking about your life and your life and his life and my life, and they are all systems in which the five essential parts of successful living are family and finance, friendships and fitness, and faith. And, um, you know, here we are. Uh, I'm recording this as uh, close to the end of uh, 2022. And, um, and I'm going to be wishing you all a very joyous and uplifting Christmas. Uh, if you are Jewish, then you will have just celebrated Hanukkah. And I hope you had a joyous Hanukkah. Uh, and and one of the things that um, I like uh, thinking about is, you know, the, the coming year. And one of the things you might consider doing for the coming year, which would be good for you and good for me, and that is become a happy warrior, connect with the happy warrior community. And uh, you just go to the website wehappywarriors.com wehappywarriors.com and um, join up become a happy warrior and, uh, and 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 build that connection in your life you can also if you have trouble finding wehappywarriors.com just go to my website rabbidaniellappen.com and you can easily click on a link there take you to the happy warriors website but uh, you, you join up and you are part of a community and you're able to contribute to that community in terms of providing guidance and insight to people who've got particular struggles. And you can draw on the wisdom of the community for situations in which you need to progress and, make, uh, and, and, and take steps towards growth. And so let's, um, let's look at a couple of examples of, of what I mean by um, systems, okay? Um, an airplane journey, right? What makes an airplane journey possible? Is it that um, in the uh, early part of the 20th century, an Englishman by the name of Frank Whittle developed the jet engine? Or is it perhaps Orville and Wilbur Wright who built an airplane and took it for its first flight in, was it 19, oh, was it 1903? I'm um, sorry, I should have that on the tip of my fingers. I think it was. 
um, at any rate. Uh, was it, um, uh, how about the computer geniuses who designed the reservation system that allowed you to go online and, and buy a ticket to get on the airplane? So your, your airplane journey came about, why? because of the brilliant interaction of all those things. You know, how about the folks who, um, uh, who drill for oil and the folks in the refinery who convert it to jet fuel, right? All, all of these things all work together. Um, the oil is delivered to the uh, fuel tanks at the airport the jet engines are bolted onto an airframe with wings that'll convert the thrust of the engine into lift that keeps the airplane airborne. It's a huge, complex system, and it all works together as an integrated totality, which is incredible. Um, think about a beehive, right? What is a beehive? A beehive also is a system. There's worker bees and there's drones and there's a queen bee and uh, somehow or another, it all works together. Um, think of a sailboat, right? A sailboat, a mast, sails, controls, and there's lots of lines and there's, it may even have a small engine, an auxiliary engine. And um, the sailboat works because the keel provides lateral resistance in the water and the sails provide effort, and the balance between the lateral resistance and the sail, the center of effort of the sails, that results in forward motion of the boat, and the weight of the engine mustn't be too high for its power. Everything works together. All right. Or how about a think of a country? A country is a system. Uh, you've got farms producing food, you've got roads and canals, and railways that move resources around, whether the resources are, are fuel or food or whatever they are. You've got power cables that provide energy. You've got uh, radio and television waves that provide information. Well, actually, it sounds a little like a human body, doesn't it? We also, in a human body, it's systems. You've got an, a system that provides air, and you've got a circulation system, and you've got a kidney system. You've got waste disposal, just as a society has, a city, if you like. Think of a city. Uh, all of these are systems, and in that way, a city and a human body are very similar. They both have systems. They've, there's got to be food. There's got to be information, nervous system, waste disposal, everything. And it all works together. Uh, if, um, if somebody decides that he's going to work very hard on keeping his lungs in great shape, but he's going to ignore his uh, cardio health, he's going to ignore all kinds of muscle, no, it doesn't work that way. You've got to work on all of these things at the same time. And so we realize that our lives are essentially a system of separate elements um, that unfortunately are all too easy to fragment. It's, it's so tempting and so easy to ignore the ones we don't particularly enjoy or the ones we're not really thinking about and to just focus on the ones where we're seeing most result, you know, whether it's um, a physical bodily development or whether it's financial development. And what we don't realize is that uh, even if you are primarily concerned that in your conscious mind, you primarily concern about your finances, you, you, you sort of tend to think to yourself, well, you know, I'm not going to go to my friend's birthday party. Uh, I've got to prepare a presentation for tomorrow. And then you listen to this show and you discover that, wait a moment, if I actually am interested in maximizing my financial revenue, I actually should be going to my friend's party. It's counterintuitive. It seems to make more sense that I stay home and work on the report, but um, it's actually just as important to work on friendships. And you're interested in fitness. Well, maybe I should just rather go to the gym instead of the uh, social at you know my local church or synagogue where I'd promised to, uh, to be there. Yeah, 
Those things all interact. And it is counterintuitive. But if it wasn't, you wouldn't need a rabbi, would you? And so that is uh, what I'm talking about. Now, um, here's an important rule about systems, and that is that if you um, improve only one or two or three of these essential five elements without regard for all of them, you'll actually not improve anything. You'll actually cause deterioration of your life. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine that um, uh, for some bizarre reason, you decide to buy a Yugo car. Now, do you know what a Yugo is? It's been years since they've been around. But it was a car built in communist Yugoslavia. <laughs> and it was about the, the biggest disaster in motoring history. Um, I mean, the, they were more of a joke than they were transport. Uh, everything was bad. I mean, the, the seats, the, the suspension, the brakes were almost non-existent. The engine... Uh, required as much prayer as it did petroleum. Um, it, you get the picture, right? Even if you've never seen of a Yugo, Y-U-G-O, uh, you get the idea. Pretty bad. And um, so you buy a Yugo and you decide, okay, now uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to buy a an engine that normally gets installed in a Bentley car. A W12, it's a 12-cylinder engine in a W configuration. It's like one of the best engines in the world. And you buy this huge, big engine, and you modify the hood compartment of the Yugo till you're able to shoehorn in the big engine. And you say to yourself, well, this is my first step in turning my Yugo into a great car. You know, uh, next month I'm going to work on the brakes you actually haven't improved the car. As bad as the Yugo is, you've actually succeeded in making it worse because you focused on one part of the system instead of keeping in mind how the system integrates all the time. And so uh, um, this is worth thinking about for a little bit, happy warriors. You think about this for a little bit, that um, if your a life needs improvement, as all of ours do, then you say to yourself, well, I think I really got to focus on, on this one of the Fs or that F. No, you've got to focus on all five of them all the time. That's what you really have to do. And so you, you can't possibly improve the condition of your life by just working on one of the five Fs any more than you can fix up a Yugo by putting in a fantastic engine. You've made it worse, actually. And so uh, uh, focusing on finances while ignoring family, or the other way around, focusing on family and ignoring finances. I've known people like that, tremendously obsessed about wanting to get married and, and start building a family, but neglecting finances or somebody who prioritizes friendships over family or family over friendships. No, they are both needed. Okay, it's a really important thing. Now, it's, it's worth understanding also that um, let's say, you know, I mentioned a beehive before. What do you think is more likely? Do you think that if you study a bee, you'll understand a beehive? Or is it more likely that if you study the beehive, you'll get a better insight into bees? And I think it's clear, it should be clear if you think about it, that studying a bee, you know, take a bee into your lab and look at it and study it, it doesn't help you understand this amazing organism. It's like a smoothly running machine where all the parts effectively communicate with one another. And by the way, to this day, it is still not clearly understood how bees actually communicate. How do they all tell each other what they need to be doing? Or how does the queen bee communicate to the other bees? Some people say it's through pheromones, smell. 
Others say it's through direct eye contact. Yet others say it's due to a special bead dance. They wiggle around and communicate information that way. Bottom line is, there are a lot of theories nobody actually knows. It's a smooth-running organism. And in the same way that it would be a mistake to view a human body as nothing other than a casing in which different creatures live. Hey, look, there's a creature we call lungs. Oh, and there's a creature we call kidney. And what's, oh, that's a heart creature. And they all live in this, in this little uh, nest called a human body. No, we don't do that. We say that a body is one organism. And it has many, many, many smoothly functioning and integrated components. There are the lungs and the kidneys and the hearts. And there's the muscles and there's the circulation system. All of these things work in synchronization with each other it's a it, it really is a system and so if you want to get a good sense you know you you want to start understanding the heart then look at the whole bodies first of all and once you look at the whole body you'll see the need to communicate oxygen around the body and the blood does that and how does the blood get around it gets pumped by the heart ah now we're finally making progress we're now getting somewhere we're looking at what we want to understand namely the heart it's the same way also uh, with um, with uh, b with um, um, your life okay in the same way that if you want to understand a b look at the whole system first you want to understand the heart look at the whole body first uh, you you want to understand the role of family and faith and finances and friendships and um, uh, what did I say family finance uh, friendships fitness and faith if you understand any one of those or all of those start off looking at the whole life human wholeness right we humans are a system of integrated parts both physically in terms of our bodies but more importantly to today's discussion in terms of our life our lives are the systems and we've got to make sure that they all are integrated and that they work properly and as i said earlier Although I live in the United States of America and uh, I observe things in the United States and I'm perhaps most familiar with the country of the United States, but uh, I know that we've got happy warriors in about 60 different countries around the world when I last checked. Right, About 60. And so some of you living in different countries, you know, maybe the Philippines or in Kenya or in Lithuania, I mentioned earlier, or Brazil or Argentina or Chile. We got people in all those places who are happy warriors. And some of you might say to yourself, well, I guess there's no point in, in, in listening. I can't gain anything from this show because he's talking about the United States of America. And the answer is that I'm speaking about permanent principles and timeless truths. It is true, if you're in Venezuela, I don't fully understand and, and know the details of the pain that you are experiencing on account of the horrible mismanagement of the country of Venezuela by its dreadful government. I don't know that. So in other words, I don't fully understand the, uh, the, the troubles from where you're coming. But I do know that where you have to end up is exactly where I have to end up, which is exactly where our friend from Brazil has to end up, which is exactly where the happy warrior from the Philippines and from Kenya has to end up. Each and every one of us, all of us, need to have solid relationships with our family, with our friends, with our finances, with our bodies, and actually, even yes, with God too. And I and I know that's that's going to be hard for some people. There's no question about it. But uh, I do want you to to think about it and at least be open to hearing something that uh, goes at odds.
with with everything you think you know and you think you believe because if you commit yourself to only listening to things with which you already agree you are condemning yourself to perpetual stagnation you'll never be able to grow this is one of the th reasons why reading is so valuable because you can pick up a book with which you don't necessarily agree but you can read it anyways and it opens up new ways of thinking that allow you to expand and allow you to grow and that is very worthwhile and now um, I want to let me just remind you again would you would I that uh, now is not a bad time for you to join our community of happy warriors you get to share with an entire community of people connection is key and if you become a happy warrior you're given access to a community of happy warriors who are all trying to reach the same goal as you namely totality holistic living meaning that my finances and my family and my friendships and my fitness and my f everything's tied together and so you know you learn things about how to involve your family how to involve your spouse how to involve your children in your work there's there's value in that and it, it helps with the children's education in finance as well and what does faith what could faith possibly have to do with your bodily fitness well as it turns out a whole lot but you want to be a happy warrior in order to find that out so join us and um, and i feel encouraged every time somebody else joins and becomes a happy warrior i feel uplifted so uh, go for it you just go to our website wehappywarriors.com we happy warriors dot com or if you wish you can also go to our regular website rabbi daniel lappin dot com and there you'll find a link to we happy warriors so you'll be able to do it that way as well but at any rate do join us and uh, that way we will all be able to move forward to good times and green pastures onwards and upwards now uh, to clarify what i mean by family uh, family is the very first of our human connections, isn't it? Right? Bef you know, before we're even cognitively uh, functioning, almost, uh, we are connected to our mothers, and then we re re recognize our fathers, and, and there you've got the beginning of this family connection. But family connection means a little bit more than that. Um, f to, to define it, family means all the connections in your life that are forged by sexual relationships that's right because when you think about it uh, next time you have a family get together maybe it's a birthday or maybe it's somebody's anniversary or whatever it is but next time you get together and there's uncles and aunts and cousins and brothers and sisters and all kind or everyone's there you have to realize as you look around that you're all there because many years ago grandpa and grandma caught one another's eyes and later found ecstasy in one another's arms and from that came the family of which you are a part and so family is essentially the relationships that are forged fundamentally by sexual relationships that that's kind of what family means how about friendship French well let, let me go to money first finances F finances means what it sounds like your money it's also connections forged by economic transactions and so uh, if you're um, if, if you're in business you have customers or you're in business and you have clients those are part of your finance F, right? Because they're not family members and they're not necessarily friends. So what are friends? Well, friends, the friendship under the friendship are relationships 
that are neither sexual nor financial. That's what friendships are. Uh, but it also goes beyond that. If you think of your, your friends as the middle of the dartboard, there are wider concentric circles that reach to community and beyond. And so, yes, if you serve on your local PTA or you're on the board of the local orchestra or whatever it is you do, those all fall into the friendship part of your world. If, uh, if you have a quilting club, right, you love sewing quilts, then those are the, that relationship and those relationships are part of friendship. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm just clarifying the, everything that comes under the heading of family, heading the, everything that comes under the heading of finances, everything that comes under the heading of friendships. Um, you know, if you're dealing with um, elections and government, whether it's, you know, city government, state government, federal, whatever it is, you're, you're involved politically, that falls under friendships as well, even though you may not be particularly friendly. It's also interesting to note that uh, family is something we innately are conscious of and drawn to intuitively when we're young. But when we're older, we kind of have to work a little bit on family because you hit the teenage years and you start feeling that everyone else's parents are nicer and more reasonable than your own parents. And eventually you, you reach a bit of maturity and you realize you've got, to, you've got to work on rebuilding relationships with siblings, with parents again, because there may be in a period of uh, semi-estrangement. So family works that way. You, you really get it when you're little. And then as you become older, you have to kind of work at it. Um, friendships, a little bit the other way around in the sense that, yeah, when you're at kindergarten and preschool, you know, you, 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 you have what you call friends, but you don't really begin um, understanding the role of friends until much later. Um, I know a number of women who, when they have given birth, actually prefer to have a girlfriend with them in the labor and delivery rather than their husband. Now, I know that may sound funny to, to some of you, um, but uh, and, and certainly maybe for first child, they like their husband there, but later on, they, they rather have a girlfriend because friends, you suddenly, you realize friends fill a role different from family. They don't replace family, don't think that for a moment. There's a, um, uh, there was a television um, sitcom that I think was, was very popular, I think during the 90s, called Friends. It was very clever and, and well written. But it, it pretty much communicated the idea that as a young adult, all you need are friends. You don't need family. And the only family members in that show that were ever seen were sort of almost caricatures. They were buffoon-type figures. But the, as far as I recall, I'm, I'm not an expert on it, but I, I did think it was a very cleverly written show and very well acted. But, um, uh, but one of the false, among many false messages the show projected was the idea that, you know, as a young adult living in the city, uh, you don't need family. All you need are friends, and that fills all your needs. You know, not true. Not true. It's, it's, it's all. Uh, you need friends and you need family, and they fill entirely different purposes. It puts uh, an, an unbearable strain on a marriage, uh, a strain that no marriage was ever designed to sustain, to tell a or to believe that your spouse has to be everything to you, your best friend. No, my spouse is my spouse. My spouse isn't my best friend. I've got best friends, a few best friends, but uh, spouse is a spouse. And as soon as you, you start thinking in terms of, well, your husband or your wife has to be your best friend, that's not really, you, you, you know, you want to be able to talk completely openly to your best friend. And yet, there are absolutely things that you may decide not to talk openly to your spouse about. Now, that's a shocker for many of you, I know, particularly if you are a romantically inclined young man. 
I can't wait to have a girlfriend or a fiancé or a wife with whom I'll be able to share everything. And uh, if you are wise, you then learn that you don't share everything. Right? Um, there are many, many, many examples of, of things that uh, a wife doesn't necessarily share with her husband, and a hus and I'm talking about a good marriage with a you know a good man and a good woman and a good marriage. And part of the way that a good marriage is sustained is exactly by knowing where boundaries are and that privacies do exist even between husband and wife. And so, uh, for instance, if a, a husband has a major disagreement with someone at work. Um, in most cases, a wise husband wouldn't tell his wife about this fight he's having at work. He's upset about it. He's bothered by it. You know what? Have a beer with, with one of your friends and talk through it with him rather than with your wife. You know why? Because the odds are that um, in six months down the road, the disagreement will be history and you and the person with whom you had a disagreement have put that totally behind you. You're, you, you're once again, your relationship is healthy, it's productive in the business, and you've both forgotten it. But your wife, because of her loyalty to you, will not forget the pain that that person caused you at work through the troubles you were having and through the disagreements you were experiencing. And so you will want to say at some point, hey, let's go out with the Smiths. And she'll say, how could we possibly, I'd never be able to sit through dinner with that man after what he did to you. And she's right to say that and to feel that. You were wrong to tell her about the disagreement, the work disagreement in the first place. Now, I hope that uh, you wives listening are, are not thinking to yourself, well, I hope my husband doesn't listen to this show. I want him to be able to tell me everything. You really don't. There really are many things uh, that we're better off not knowing. Um, I mean, one uh, rather uh, grim and, uh, and gloomy example is, uh, you know, let's imagine that a genie popped out of the bottle and asked you if you'd like to know the date of your death. I mean, would, would you say yes? I don't think so. That would be an example of uh, information that we're better off not knowing. And there are many other things like that as well. But specifically, uh, in the area of marriage, sure. Of course, there are things that husbands would be wise not to share with wives and wives not to share with husbands. That's why you have friends. That's right. And so understanding the, the need for each of these things, well, that's what we're talking about. Um, so we looked at, at family right? Connections that are human connections forged mainly by sexual relationships, your finances, your money, your connections forged by economic transactions, uh, friendships, relationships that are neither sexual nor financial. And this becomes a wider set of concentric circles that extend from close friends to less close friends, to friends of friends, to community, to clubs, to associations, to society, to, com to, uh, to even to, uh, to government and, uh, and citizenship and civic groups, etc. Okay, fitness, uh, that's pretty straightforward, right? Your body, matters of health, the matters of diet, and also uh, matters of aging, right? Understanding aging, because again, if your um, if if your finances are in good shape, aging is much better, much easier. And uh, if your family is in good shape, aging is is much easier and much better. And so all of these all of these things, you know, hard to see at the outset. Necessarily, why you know? Why do I need friendships when I'm focused on fitness, or why do I need family when I'm focused on finances? That is exactly the point of today's show, because your life is a system, and one of the fundamental and unchangeable rules of system is that all the parts are needed, all the parts reinforce and support one another and all the parts depend on all the other parts 
And so uh, when we realize we're not talking about a beehive, we're not talking about a city, we're not talking about your body, we're talking about your whole life. And yes, your family and your finances, your friendships and your fitness, and yes, your faith, do all interdepend upon one another. Not a single one of these is more important than any other. They are literally all equally important. And that's true for a... Uh, for any system, right? Would anybody say that the engine is more important than the brakes in a car? No, it's a silly thing. You know, if, if you're needing to slow down, you need the brakes. If you're needing to speed up, you need the engine. Uh, each one, for the system called a car, you need all the elements equally urgently. And then finally, the last F that um, I haven't yet dealt with is the one of faith. What is faith? Faith is all matters that are spiritual, which means all matters that cannot be measured mechanically. They cannot be measured in a laboratory. And so, I mean, hardly anybody would dispute the importance in your life of things like your dignity, your reputation, your integrity, your optimism, your persistence, your endurance. These are all spiritual characteristics. Surely you need to know how to develop them. Well, if you don't understand faith, then you have a, you're suffering from a tremendous handicap in being able to deal with and improve those things. And uh, secondly, under faith comes God. And, uh, and again, you know, realizing that um, there are many challenges in many areas in which a connection with God is a huge help. And I, I know that there are many people who believe that um, faith in God is a kind of like a wart. You know, you're, you're born with it, um, or a, uh, you, just, you either have it or you don't have it. And it isn't like that at all. In the same way that, you know, you don't automatically have physical fitness. It's, it's something you have to develop. You have to work at it. You have to eat right. You have to exercise, etc., etc. Uh, so it is with uh, connection with God. Well, I don't, I don't believe in God really. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm agnostic. I don't know if I, I just don't even think about that stuff. Yeah, well, you need to, right? And, I, and again, I just want to make clear um, I don't care. It, it's not as if I'm a rabbi trying to notch up uh, the hand, you know, the 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 handle of my revolver or something. Hey, good, another happy warrior became religious. No, I'm not doing that at all, right? It, th this is information for your use. This is information for your benefit. And so, although um, I I know so many people, and throughout my life, I've always known people. Who, who say, you know, I'm, I'm not a particularly religious person. I, you know, I don't know if I believe in God. I, 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 fine, fine, fine. It's okay. All I'm telling you is that for a fully holistic life, where all the parts of your life interact smoothly with one another, then you actually do need to figure out how to build a relationship with God. Well, it feels weird. I'm building a relationship with something or someone that I don't even know exists. That's all right. Don't worry about that. It won't be the first time in your life you're inconsistent. <laughs> Inconsistency is not the worst thing in the world. Inconsistency is very different from hypocrisy. Two different things entirely. All right. So um, let us uh, uh, just bear in mind then that under the faith heading, there is um, areas of spirituality. Music, by the way, music is a totally spiritual phenomenon. Totally spiritual, because there's no instrument that exists that can tell you whether a particular song is a happy song or a sad song. Right? And I've looked at artificial intelligence, don't see that yet. Now, if you, by artificial intelligence, you just mean a comparator, a, a comparator circuit that goes to the internet or, or is, is, uh, is programmed to know a certain type of major chord is, is happy, but a minor chord is sad, fine. But in general, uh, music is nothing but vibrating air molecules until it hits your soul, 
until it hits your brain, until something goes on inside of you, the precise nature of which nobody understands. Language itself, by the way, language communication, spiritual, not understood at all. Will it ever be understood? No, I don't think so. Um, two, uh, two different ways of contemplating the human presence on our planet. Right? This is all part of the faith one. You've got to ask yourself, you know, how did human beings get to this planet? And as far as I know, there are only two answers. One is that the good Lord created us in his image and put us here. And uh, the other is that by a lengthy process of unaided materialistic evolution, primitive protoplasm turned into bookkeepers and ballerinas. Okay. I don't know a third alternative of how human beings are found on this planet. Some people tell me, well, uh, Rabbi, it's little, little men on spaceships from another planet came and planted us here as part of their experiment or as part of their science project. Fine. Then all we are doing is postponing the question of where they came from. So that doesn't help very much. Um, and you might say, well, who cares? You know, I'm a practical person. I don't really care about philosophy and these questions of how we got here and how we didn't get here. And my answer is that if you are a practical person, you really are a practical person, then you have to think about these things because there are real life implications in terms of understanding money, in terms of raising children, in, in terms of uh, uh, nurturing your marriage. A lot of these things are shaped by how you answer the question. Well, I'd like to answer it with science. No, science is agnostic on the topic. I mean, obviously, science is going to say we came here through a lengthy process of unaided materialistic evolution. But, uh, but then science is not very helpful in areas of spiritual measurement. It's just, it's the wrong instrument. I can't use a barometer to find out if I have to wear a sweater tomorrow. Wrong instrument, right? And so uh, those are the, um, um, the, the five Fs, the five areas upon which a successful life absolutely depends. And what most people, by far and away the majority of people, simply don't know about. Because you're not taught this in school, you're not taught it in college. And that is that your life is a system and that all five elements of the system operate together with one another, interdepend upon one another, and enhance one another. In other words, if you have uh, good friends, then that's good for your family, your marriage, and your physical fitness as well. In, in ways that friends encourage friends to do good things, right? If, if, you know, if you're part of a married couple and you hang out with a lot of divorced people, that's not the most healthy thing for your marriage, right? So um, there we've got it, friends. That's about as far as we're going to take it today. But as you know, uh, this is an ongoing course. The Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show goes on week after week, and you can go back week before week, and you can do um, research on earlier shows and earlier topics, because I am telling you all the time, only things that have to do with how the world really works, and things that are permanent principles and timeless truths of reality. They were true five years ago, they'll be true in ten years' time, there is true in the Philippines and in Kenya and in Bolivia and in Brazil as they are in California. So um, until next week, I want to wish you a week of growth, a week of happiness, and you know what? A very terrific Christmas, an uplifting and joyous Christmas. And by the way, uh, let me wrap up with a, uh, a wine, a complaint, and a grouse. I've noticed that year by year, fewer and fewer people put out Christmas lights and Christmas decorations on their homes. 
I think that's sad. I think it's a fantastic thing for people to have their faith clearly established. And yes, I know, I understand that, you know, a big inflatable snowman with a light in it on your lawn does not really speak of your devotion to your Lord and Savior. I get that, obviously. But at the same time, it's kind of nice. And I, I think it drives uh, virulent secular fundamentalists crazy, with, which, which is another advantage of doing it. So I do hope that if you're Christian, I do hope you're uh, decorating your home and uh, putting those lights out. And uh, yes, so it uses a little bit of God-given fuel. So what? There's plenty more where that came from. So until next week, I wish that you will have a week of great progress and growth in your family and your finances, your friendships, your fitness, and your faith. I'm Rabbi Daniel Lappin. God bless.